Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number 27. And today we're going to be answering the question, what is the required distance between exit doors? And so to get started, let's jump right into the building code and start digging in. Let's see what the IBC states in section IBC 1007.1.1. There it reads, where two exits, exit access doorway, exit access stairway or ramps, or any combination thereof are required from any portion of the exit axis, they shall be placed at a distance apart equal to not less than one half of the length of the maximum overall diagonal dimension of the building or area to be served measured in a straight line between them. So what does all this jargon mean? Well, for starters, it clarifies that this section only applies when two exits are required. In addition, it notes here that we need a maximum diagonal dimension of the building or area. Now, what is this? To show you graphically, here is a floor plan of a building. It just so happens that this building is a rectangle. Therefore, either diagonal would be the same. And just in case you're wondering, this is the diagonal distance. Let's assume it is 120 feet from one corner to the other. That takes care of the so-called diagonal dimension. Now let's go back and read the rest of the code. It says, Distance between exits must not be less than one half of the maximum diagonal dimension. And it also states that it must be measured in a straight line between them. So what does this mean? Well, going back to our example here with the floor plan that we drew, in our case, we have 120 feet. If we divide that in two to get half, that means that we are required to have 60 feet. Therefore, the distance between our stairwell doors must be a minimum of 60 feet apart. Now, there is an exception to this, so let's go back to the code to read about it. Exception number two in this section states, where a building is equipped throughout with an automatic sprinkler system in accordance with section 903.3.1.1 or 903.3.1.2, the separation distance shall not be less than one-third of the length of the maximum overall diagonal dimension of the area served. Man, let's, let's break this down. This exception only applies if the entire building is provided with an automatic sprinkler system. If it does, then we can take advantage of this exception and reduce the required separation distance to one-third instead of one-half the diagonal dimension. So, back to our example, looking at our floor plan, if we have a sprinkler system, we can divide 120 feet in three to get a third, which equals 40 feet. The distance, therefore, between our stairwell doors must be 40 feet minimum if the building is sprinklered. There is another exception to this, but we will talk about that later. This example may work if the entire floor was taken by a single tenant. But what if the floor was split into various tenants? Well, let's see an example where the floor is split into various tenants. First, let's make it clear that the separation between our stairwell exits is still needed. Second, for the sake of this example, Let's assume that all three suites need two exits each. To keep track of all these arrows, let's assume that our red arrow is our diagonal dimension and our blue arrow is our required exit separation. Suite 1's longest diagonal would be this distance. And therefore, these two exits must be at least half the diagonal dimension or a third the diagonal dimension if sprinklered. Suite 2's longest diagonal would be this distance, and likewise, these two exits must be at least half the diagonal dimension or a third the diagonal dimension if sprinklered. Last but not least, suite 3's longest diagonal would be this distance, and likewise, these two exits must be at least half the diagonal dimension or one third the diagonal dimension if sprinklered. But we're not done yet. Now we need to look at each individual suite. And as an example, let's look at suite number one's layout. 
We already know that the suite as a whole needs two exits, but as you can see in the layout, suite number one has a large conference room. And for the sake of this example, let's assume that this conference room also needs two exits. Which by the way, a link to a video will pop up if you want to know when the IBC requires two exits. Please be sure to watch that if you're interested. Anyway, back to our example, if the large conference room needs two exits, then we need to check out the diagonal dimension to figure out the distance. In this case, the large conference room's longest diagonal is this one, and therefore the distance between exits has to be half the diagonal dimension or one third if it's sprinklered. There is one last exception to the rule that I want to point out. This is the exception we skipped a few minutes ago. So let's go back to that section and read exception number one. It says, where interior exit stairways or ramps are interconnected by a one hour fire resistance rated corridor conforming to the requirements of section 1020, the required exit separation shall be measured along the shortest direct line of travel within the corridor. I know this is a lot, but let's look at the requirements of this exception. This exception only applies if you have a one hour fire resistance rated corridor that interconnects your exit stairway or ramp. Let's leave it here for a minute and check out the plan we looked at a minute ago. Looking at this plan, if this corridor was a one hour fire resistance rated corridor, then this exception would apply here. For the sake of this example, let's assume this is true in our case. What will this exception allow? Well, let's go back to the code so that we can continue reading the exception. The exception continues saying, the exit separation needs to be measured along the shortest direct line of travel within the corridor. Here, it makes it clear that we measure not using a straight line, but using the line of travel. So to see how this will change, let's go back and look at our floor plan. Originally, we just took a straight line, as we were allowed, and measured the distance between our doors. But since we have a rated corridor, then we are allowed to use the actual path of travel instead of a straight line. So that's it. Simple, right? This just gives you a bit more distance to play with. What if we are required to have three exits? Going back to IBC section 1007.1.2, it states, where access to three or more exits is required, not less than two exit or exit access doorways shall be arranged in accordance with the provisions of section 1007.1.1. .1. Additional required exit or exit access doorways shall be arranged a reasonable distance apart so that if one becomes blocked, the others will be available. So basically here, we have the same requirements as section 1007.1.1 .1 .1 that we already talked about. Two doors need to comply with this. Let's see how this would work by looking at a sample floor plan. Let's assume that this suite is required to have three exits. As you can see, we do in fact provide one, two, three exits. We just read that two of the doors have to comply with the same requirements as we discussed when we only need two doors. That means that the diagonal dimension still applies, and so does the separation requirement. The clarification is that this only applies to two of the three doors. In this example, we can take the diagonal dimension and separate doors one and two, as per the required distance, which is half the diagonal dimension, or third the diagonal dimension if the building is sprinklered. But what about the third door? Well, let's go back to the code section and read it so that we can understand it. Here, the code section states, additional required exit or exit access doorways shall be arranged a reasonable distance apart. And it tells us why. So that if one becomes blocked, the others will be available. To see how this applies to our sample, let's go back to the sample floor plan. Let's look at location of exit door number one. What would happen if we placed a third exit right next to it? Would that be acceptable? Well, if door number one becomes blocked, in case of a fire for example, 
you can see how the location of that third door wouldn't be a good option because it is highly likely that that door will also be blocked. So a location here for a third door would not be reasonable. However, we do show a third door here. And looking at the distance between exit 1 and 3, as well as the distance between exit 2 and 3, we could come to the conclusion that this is a reasonable and therefore acceptable distance. In summary, there is no separation required between exit 1 and 3, or between exit 2 and 3. The only code stipulation for this third exit is that it is a reasonable distance apart. <laughs> As you can imagine, this may be a bit subjective depending on the project specifics and layout of the suite. But hey, such is life. Don't give up on me now, we're almost done, just a little more. The last item we need to cover is, how do you measure between exits? So far we have simply shown an arrow pointing between doors. But if you have in mind that most commercial doors are 3 foot wide, you can see that there is a big difference between measuring between the closest portion of the door width and the widest portion of the door width. So which one is right? IBC 1007.1.1.1 states the following. The separation distance required in section 1007.1.1 shall be measured in accordance with the following. One. The separation distance to exit or exit access doorways shall be measured to any point along the width of the doorway. And there it is, right here. It clearly states you can measure to any point along the width of the doorway. So, you can measure to whichever point provides you with the longest separation distance. And now, that is it guys. It wasn't so hard, was it? If you stuck to the end, Hey, guess what? Well done. You deserve an A+. If you like this video, please share it with others. Subscribe and leave a comment, and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If there are other subjects that you would like to see in this channel, leave it in the comments. Perhaps it'll be one of the future videos. Here are a couple of videos that you may like. Click on them and keep learning. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.